Hey, everybody, and welcome to Pace Studio on the Road. We are here at historic Club Passim in Cambridge with Squirrel Flower. Thank you so much for doing this, Ella. Thank you for having me. Yeah. It's good to be back here. Yeah, yeah, it's, I imagine. I know you've got good history at this place. Um, it feels good just to be out in the world generally these days. So it we're does. very happy that you did this with us here today, especially at this place. And uh, we're about to hear a lot of your music today. Uh, some of it is unreleased. Some of it's from the debut album. And there's one early one also, so very representative across your catalog. Yeah. Um, what's happening first? Um, first, I'm playing an unreleased song called Flames and Flat Tires. Busted lung, kicking myself for buying those parts off of that guy back in Des Moines before the drought started. But I'll get it fixed up soon enough, and you'd better watch out for me. I'll be flying down the road in flames and flat tires, baby. Flames and flat tires. Thank you, man. This is really fun. Thanks for being here again. Um, so I hear uh, Des Moines over and over in that song. I know that you've, you've come back from Iowa. You've been a, a Boston person for a long time. And that idea of, of transience, I mean, you were, recorded the, the debut album in New York City. And can you talk a little bit about the way that transient uh, nature of your life and being in different locations affects the songwriting, affects the vibe and everything about the music? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think like the older I get, the more I realize that I'm the type of person who just can't stay in one place for too long. And um, like my music, I think, really follows that sort of trajectory. Like the first EP I made as Squirrel Flower was really like all about place. And it was like my first time in Iowa. And it like the music was sort of a response to my environment changing. And then the next album was like still in that vein a bit, but branched off a little bit. Um, and then, yeah, my debut album that just came out, I guess, a year ago. It feels like yesterday because yeah. it's been a strange year. Yeah, it feels like like 10 years ago, but also somehow like a month ago. Yeah, time time is so strange nuts. these days. So nuts. But um, yeah, there's just like so much thematically about movement and being stuck and being antsy and... Um, yeah, I've lived in a few different places in my life, so, yeah. 
Good. Any any sort of inkling for you about what is what is next after Boston, or are you? Uh... Yeah, I'm hoping to go back to the Midwest. Yeah. Shortly. Back to um, Iowa. Back to um, I'm thinking Chicago because my drummer lives there, and um, my bass player right now lives in Iowa actually because she's finishing college right now at Grinnell. Um, and yeah, I just like have so many good friends in Chicago and in the music scene there. Nice. Well, I'm sure the Midwest will be happy to have you back. We're certainly happy to have you here at Passim today. So thank you for doing it. Yeah. And yeah, there's a lot of music still coming up. What's happening second today? Um, second is Headlights from my album, which came out in January. Thank you. It's funny to have like the two people clapping. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But infinitely better than nobody clapping. I mean, even just even just the one has to feel different from well, cla- uh, most days these days. Clapping is a weird thing. Like, I feel like at shows when there are more than two people clapping, hopefully, it's still like, what do I do? Like, if I'm not tuning, like, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, well, you have already thanked us just uh, by by virtue of the fact that your music exists here today. Um, and this stage is, I know you've you've got a long history with this place. Um, I'm I do, about yeah. to about to pull up a picture so the internet can see. Ooh. Matt Matt sent this picture of you. I think you I was 17 this, in that picture. On this very stage, yeah, at the Campfire Festival in 2014, which is yeah. Matt. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the first time that you ever played here. Um, it was the first time I did like a legit gig here, but. Um, I think starting in like 2011, 2012, I would come here and play open mics and wait, you know, come here at like six, sign up, wait for three hours, <laughs> watch everybody, you know, and then get my like two song slot. Um, that was like the grind really when I was 14 and 15 and like just trying to play as many open mics around Boston as I could. And this one was the like the coveted, the coveted one. Yeah. 
Is that the the most memorable time in in terms of your relationship with this place? Those early gigs, or have there been uh, memorable state me- me- memorable gigs since? I um I think those are the most memorable gigs of me playing here. But I you know I also grew up going to shows here, and there was one time I think I was still in high school. I came here and saw Laura Marling play like oh, nice. really intimate like solo acoustic show and. Yeah, it was really stunning, and like I remember, feel like I was so close to her. It was just like Jesus Christ. Like when you are that close to your musical heroes, especially as like a young teenager, it's wild to see that they're a real person. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's. Cr- I think when I saw her last time it was like PlayStation Theater. Or I mean, it was like a you know two. It was a huge. It was a huge. I want to play the PlayStation. It was like theater. two thousand people. It's a massive theater in New York. Wow. I can imagine that in a room like this, that it would be uh, be even that much more impactful and totally, intimate. That's awesome. Totally. Um, awesome. Well, there is, there's a lot more of your music coming up. What are you going to play third today? Um, I'm going to play quite an old song called All Go Now, and it's from my first ever Squirrel Flower EP. Oh. Uh-huh. 
Thank you. Thank you, Ella. This is great. Um, have, is, is that song, does that song tend to be a staple of shows? I mean, when shows were a thing that people were doing? It is used that a, to be. I, yeah. I haven't played that live in probably four years. Oh, yeah. what made it seem like, uh, I mean, it was beautiful. I'm glad that you played it. What made it, what made that song seem like the right choice for today? Well, I've been, I think I've been like wanting to do more in terms of loop and sampling stuff. Um, yeah, I figured I'd just take a risk and do it. Yeah, well, yeah. this is a beautiful environment to take a risk. There's no safety net here. I mean, it's all going out live on the internet, but it seems like you're Love probably you're accustomed to, to working that way. I know that the studio album, the debut, was recorded in a... I mean, there's something of a safety net when you're recording songs in a studio, but you're doing it with no overdubs, very limited overdubs. So you, it seems like you're accustomed to working uh, yeah, yeah. somewhat well, that, in that scenario. Yeah, that album, like... I haven't really, well, before I recorded that, I hadn't really worked that way, um, but it was recorded mostly live, at least the full band stuff, and even the stuff that wasn't recorded live, I think we tracked the whole thing in seven days, Wow. Um, and like the, the days and weeks and months leading up to it, I was a full-time student, and I was like working 20 hours a week as a bartender, and like trying also to like get this album together. Um, and it felt, yeah, I sort of just, I was like, all right, I have these like kind of songs, let's do it. Let's just record it and see what happens. And the final product is just what happened. Cool. And so what, what's that relationship like between you and Gabe? And Gabe Wax produced, right? Yeah, yeah. And it was awesome is, working yeah, with what is Yeah, what does each of you bring to the table when you guys sit down in a room together to do stuff? Yeah, I mean, God, it, honestly, I think two years ago is when we first recorded it. Um, but he was like really helpful in just like helping me organize all of the different parts. And he basically like selected the musicians to play on it. Um, yeah, it was really cool to collaborate with him. And we recorded it in New York at Rare Book Room. And I think it might've been the last record that was recorded there before it closed down. Oh, wow. Yeah, after like 20 years. Damn. Did it close because COVID or did it, did no, it have that happen closed. before? No, not closed. I think like the owner just was ready to sell it. Yeah. And yeah. Cool. Well, I'm As glad that you got in go. there and made what you made. We've been enjoying it quite a bit lately here. Thank you. And uh, we'll look forward to when there are details about new music. And uh, there's still there's still one more song coming up in this session. What's happening last Yeah, this today? is actually another unreleased song, new song, um, called Starshine. And I need to tune. <laughs> yes, please do. It's always, always, always the right call. The 
That's all I got. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, and thank you for doing this. This has been a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. Thanks for sharing your music and thanks for sharing the unreleased music. We'll stay tuned for when there are details about when that's going to be available in a recorded version. So thank you so much for coming by. And uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we will remain tuned. And it sounds like Iowa might be getting your Chicago is going to get you back. So Maybe uh, Iowa. Who knows? move safely. Yeah, Best of luck on you. all your endeavors. I'm positive we're going to cross paths in a similar scenario again. So I hope. Yeah, until then, thank you very much for doing this. Thanks. All right.